And welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and you know what? I cannot help but want to spin these pinwheel coasters. This is part of the gifts of Christmas series. Now I've slightly changed it from the original pattern and I will tell you a little bit more about this. Now one thing that you will notice about these, they look fabulous on either side so you can use them either or and they make for a great coaster for your holiday decor. So let's get started right now. So as I promised, I did change the pattern slightly and I have actually maintained all the stitch counts to be accurate. The only difference that I make is that when I like coasters, I like them to be thick. I like them to be substantial so that, you know, it's something that's really quite meaningful on the table. So when you see the red here, or the hot pink I should call it, is that there's two strands of hot pink, two strands of white, and two strands of gray so that you can really bulk it up. And because I've done that, my coaster is bigger than what it's calling for in the pattern. But you can see it's a really great generous size. So let's get started working on this project right now. I'm just going to walk you through the program just to get you started and then I'm going to take you step by step. Now as promised this is a great pattern. It's by Mary Jane Protus and this is called the pinwheel for the table and tree. Now you will notice that there's a set of instructions. We have the placemat, we have coasters as well as we have garland here and in this one that I'm doing today I'm working on the coaster. So when we start off it says work the same as the placemat through round one. So essentially what the designer is asking us to do is go back to the placemat and begin and to, to go all the way to round number one and then we pick pick up from that point going forward. So let's uh, begin and grab your crochet hook. Now because I'm using two yarn at one time, I'm using a size six millimeter or a size J hook. In this pattern she is asking for a five millimeter or a USH if you're going to follow the pattern and use the yarn recommendation that she has. So to get started today we are going to be using two colors throughout the middle so you can choose any two colors that you wish and then the exterior is a different color but again the creativity is up to you and it does not matter on which color we start with because they're equal on both levels. So to keep it easy I'm just going to grab the pink because it's uh, closest to me but I'm going to keep both of these strands very close by because we're going to be jumping back and forth as we do this but once you get started you're going to realize how fun this is as well. So let's uh, create a slip knot. We are going to treat these like it's one string so just put them together and just pretend you're only using one string or strand and essentially what we need to do is just tighten it up and then just chain four. Remember that this never counts as one. So one, two, three and four and now let's join it with the ring. So we're just going to go into the very starting chain that we started with, grab the yarn, pull it through and now we have a starting ring that is the interior of your coaster. So let's move along to your next part. Okay, using the same color we're going to start. So we're going to chain one first and then we're going to come into the center of the ring for a single crochet. So let's go right into the center and I'm trapping my stragglers on top so that it's always going to be in the center and you'll never see it. So the first one is a single crochet. We then do a half double crochet next. So we're going to wrap going into the middle, grab the yarn and pull through all three at the same time. So that was half double crochet and now it's asking us to do three double crochet next. So we're just going to wrap into the center for one, wrap again to the center for two. These are double crochets and again three. So now what I want you to do is pull up on a generous loop like this and take your material off, your yarn off the hook because we're now going to grab the white next. So this is, if, if you're looking at it carefully, this is one side of the pinwheel as you can see. Okay, we're now about to grab the white. We never ever want to tie a knot in this because we don't want to see it but you'll bury it so that you'll never see it anyway. So just making sure that your strands are not going to be twisting up with each other. This here, I'm going to get rid of that right now so I'm just going to grab my fancy dancy scissors, trim that out of the way so that it, it's not part of the tutorial as you can see and we want to slip in our hook right into the center of the ring and we just want to grab the white and pull it through just like you see. Okay, so I'm just going to just position this in my hands and we're treating the two like it's one string. I simply want to chain first and then I want to come back into the center of the ring, make sure the straggler is left on top so we can bury it just like we've already done. So we're going to do one single crochet and then we're going to do a half double crochet. And I simply just want to slide it back so that you have more room on your ring and just like you did with the, the pink here, we want to do three 
double crochets. So you can see that it doesn't matter which color that you started with because we have done the exact same thing on both colors. The only difference is is that we use the pink to form the first center ring. Once you have this white done, I just want you to just to pull it out and what we want to do is just examine it, make sure it's okay. Get rid of these uh, stragglers. So if you have any stragglers hanging out, let's trim those off and then we're gonna begin the next part. So we're just gonna position again and we're gonna start off with the pink and just pull everything tight and now it's asking us to do two double crochets into each one of the white area here. That is the abbreviation or summary of what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna wrap our yarn and just coming into the very first one here, okay, and we're just gonna do two double crochets. So one and two into the same stitch. And you can use one strand with this uh, particular uh, tutorial as well. I'm using two because I want extra thickness in my project. So we're just gonna do, so that there's gonna be a total of five of these. So one, two, and if you've done it right, you will not have any more stitches to play with anyway. So you can only do five. So that was three, four, okay, and so then your last one here is right where this one is connecting. And we want to make sure we get that one as well. And then this is obviously we can't go any further because we need to get more white done before we can move along just like you see. So once you get that part done we are gonna pull the string again, release it and now we're gonna bring the white back into the story where we're gonna start twisting it around. So I'm ready to begin again and I'm just picking up the white again so I'm just pulling the loops back around the hook and again the other loops. You may need to spin your project to untwist these strands. They will get twisted so you just gotta spin your project and, and accordingly to get it untangled. So what we wanna do is that we wanna start off with the first pink here and we rotate all the way around to the last stitch and what we want to do is just simply start to double crochet immediately into the first. So I did not chain up like you would or, or in any project like starting um, essentially you just want to jump right in and just like we did two double crochets into each of this area here, we want to do two double crochets for the entire round leading up into the knot area where the last one finishes. So every stitch is going to get two double crochets in. So continue all the way around to the knot area. I'll meet you back up in a second because we're about to start off the pink at that moment. So hopefully you've done your two in a row. You can see how pretty it's looking and essentially now you're at the knot area and we're just gonna pull a big loop. Let you know on a little secret, we're actually almost done the white. If you really look at it here, follow the white all the way around. <laughs> Maybe I should put it the same way. But you can see I'm really not that far off. And so we're gonna move down in the instructions to round number two and in round number two it is so simple. I'm actually amazed how simple this is. So we're gonna grab our hot pink again and we're gonna pull it hot around the loop just like so and what we need to do then is follow in the instructions to carry on because we're now gonna finish off the pink by the end of this particular revolution. So let's begin. We're gonna start off with the very first stitch that you run into. Every one of the next ten are going to be two double crochets so I'm gonna count them out in groups of two. So I'm gonna put two um, double crochets into each. So that was one. This is two. And this is going to be three. And we have four. And we have five. And we have six. So making sure we're not getting all twisted up here. That was six. And we have seven. And we have eight. Almost done, we have nine. And then we have 10. 
So we've just put two double crochets into each and you will notice if you look at the coasters here you will notice how the pink comes down into a slight point. So you can't just stop. You have to finish it off. So to finish it off the next stitch is going to be a half double crochet. The next stitch is going to be single crochet and then the final stitch is going to be a slip stitch just like so. And so we're going to now fasten that off and we, we can weave in the ends. We don't have to be too careful about that at this moment because we still have another revolution to go around the entire one as we're gonna do the gray all the way around. So let's just weave these in gently just like so just going all the way around like so. And remember I promised you that the white is almost done. Well if you look at it in the pinwheels the red is finishing up here and the white finishes off the, the bottom. So let me uh, take you back to the pattern and we're going to finish off the white momentarily. To begin again we just have fastened off the pink. We're now just going to finish it off with the white and again the white cannot just end. We have to make it go narrow. So as per the instructions it says to double crochet into the very next one and then we have to then follow and it says to go and repeat the same pattern that we've already done. The repeating is the finishing point. So the first one is going to be a half double crochet just like so. The next one is going to be a single crochet and then the next one is going to be a slip stitch. So we're just going to fasten that off as well and same rules apply to that is that you don't have to be too generous or too careful with that to fasten that off because we still have another revolution of the gray to go all the way around. So I'm just going to weave it through the top edge here because in the next revolution everything that you're doing right now is going to get buried in real good. So let's begin the border. The borders are the same regardless if it is the placemat or the coasters. I wouldn't start off in this section. I would start off in the middle of somewhere else. I always have a big thing about starting and stopping always in the same location because sometimes it becomes very obvious. So I just want to slip into any stitch on the outside and again there's no knots here. It's not a magic trick. We're just going to just bring it through and we're simply just going to lay the straggler down on top and we're going to bury it. So we're going to chain one first and then we're going to single crochet into that same spot. And now we're going to chain two. So one and two and we're going to come down into that same spot again for another single crochet. Just like you see. Now if you look at here it looks like you have like peaks going on. That's because of the way that we're doing it. So we're essentially going to skip the next stitch, go to the second over and immediately just continue to bring that straggler over so we can continue to bury it. We're going to single crochet, chain two and single crochet. So do you see the repeat pattern? So we're going to skip the next one, go to the second just like so, chain two and come back down in for a single crochet. So continue to do that. I'll show you one more time. We're going to skip, go to the next, chain two and then going into the same stitch. When you get to the overlapping section just like this, this is a stitch and so is that. So we've got to make sure that when you go over that you're including that as part of your skipping process. So we just want to skip over and just make sure that oops this is not a double crochet. This is a single crochet and uh, just continue. And so if you just skip over just like that it'll work out just perfectly. So it's one of those things you just you don't really have to worry about it too much but you should be aware that that's what you need to do. So continue to go all the way around. So you're going to come all the way around. I just happen to be off by one stitch and I want to prove that point. You know what? Big deal. <laughs> so just come into the, just stretch it over just like so and voila. See it totally disappears. So that's nothing you, you need to worry about. So let's uh, fasten that off and what I need you to do is grab your darning needle. It's the best way to fasten this off. You know somebody is going to be tugging at these things. So you're going to want to take your time. Pull this out yarn and then essentially just put these onto the darning needle. So get both of them through that little tiny hole and essentially what we want to do then is feed it in the direction from which we came. So we just want to go in behind the stitches just underneath and we want to bury this in. Underneath pull it through going into a different area from where you came out of and going behind underneath the stitches again 
the other direction. And then final third, three times the charm for three for good luck. And just come out the other side. Like so. And I want to pull it all snug. I want to grab my scissors and I want to trim that. Like so. And then essentially we are now completed and now I have a matching set to go on my coffee table for this Christmas. On behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd, I'm your host Mikey. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any loose ends, just make sure that you take them apart and join me next time as we have more free tutorials and ideas to inspire you further. Until next time, I'm Mikey. Bye.